So let's go over a knee release protocol. These are really effective procedures and something we do every day in clinic. So let's start with the quadriceps here. So Mickey, I'm gonna just get on here for a bit. Right here, we get you to come around here with the camera, please. So you can actually see what we're doing here. Okay, on this side over here, so down and just go yeah, straight leg here, good. And I'll just get you to pull in there a little bit too. How's that feeling? That's good. Yeah, no problem there. And back. So after I've done, oh, probably three to five passes on this and I feel some release, I'm also going to check and see whether or not we've got any problems in the vastus lateralis. So I'll get you to actually internally rotate your foot and bring it down, bend. Okay. Bring it in. That feels a bit different. Yeah, it's a little tighter. Yeah, good. And again, down. Good. And back. And again. So you can feel that all the way up up towards the hip there. And then I'm just going to get fairly close to the knee itself. Okay, turn that in. Good. Feel that one a bit more? Yeah. And back. Now, while we're here, I can also get on the lateral collateral ligament. So just cross between there, right? Now bring that in. Grab that. Pull it in. Feeling that quite a bit? Yeah. Okay and back. So sometimes we use our forearms, we don't get on the end of the elbow, but we use our thumb. But we probably want to back this up because if you don't, it's going to be pretty hard on your thumb. Back. Let's do one more pass on that. Good. Excellent. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the hamstrings. I'll just get you to lie back here. Get on the hamstrings and we'll actually move on to the adductors and kind of work our way down the leg here a bit. You okay there, Mickey? Yep. Good, good. So I'm just going to get up and kind of work and turn that a bit. You okay? Yeah. So you can actually work through the semimembranosis, semi-tendinosis, and biceps femoris as we get lateral. You okay? Yeah. That's pretty tight. That is. Steve, I'll just get you to back off there just a bit. That'd be great. Thank you. So as we work through this area, we're going to feel something and kind of hold and release. And hold and release. Okay, now I'm going to just get on the adductors a bit here. You okay? Yeah. Now, the adductors can get pretty sensitive, but they're incredibly important in terms of rehabilitating the knee. These are the antagonists of the glute med. So as soon as you start having tight, restricted adductors, you're going to get a diminishing of neurological input to the gluteus medius. Consequently, you're going to lose stability in the knee, the ankle, and throughout the hip. So these are really, really important structures. You okay there? Yep. Wonderful. Thanks for asking. <laughs> okay, good. Good. I'll just get you to back out with the camera there a bit, Steve. Thank you. Okay, so just like we got on the lateral collateral ligament, from this position, I can actually get on the medial collateral ligament and take it out of it here too. Okay, so I'm going to get you to actually just bring your leg out like so, okay? I'm going to go in here, take it out. Feeling that one a bit? And back. And again. And of course, before we'd even do these protocols, we would have run you through a complete orthopedic and neurological examination. And I'd be focusing on particular areas that came up during that exam. Good. Doing okay there? Oh yeah. Good. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to get you to go onto a side lying position, please, with your right side up. So let's get on the lateral side of the leg here. We're actually going to go down the IT band a bit, the lateral quad. We'll also get on the vastus lateralis and the biceps femoris, but we'll work out under the glute med. So Mickey, I'll just get you to bring your leg up here a bit. I'm going to get on to the IT band. How are we doing there? That's nice. No problem there? No. Okay, good. Not so nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, doing good. Good, good. All right. 
No problem there, but you feel that really stretching it out, yeah. eh? Yeah. We're just going to take our time down there. Okay, I'm actually going to move up here a little bit onto the glute mead. I'll get you to reach up and hold the table there. You okay there? Yeah. And then I'll get up onto the glute mead here. Steve, I'll just get you to come up over here a bit, please, and just fill in from this angle here. Come right up there. Take it down. How are we doing? And as you see, it's not a fast motion. You bring it down and you bring it up. Right. Hold the position a little bit. Holy you okay there? Holy yeah. Good. And again, right down. Good. Now, as I mentioned, we would have done an orthopedic examination before we even got here. One of the things we'd look at, if we had some lateral joint line tenderness, we'd be thinking a meniscus involvement. Just bend the knee in here a little bit. And so I'd probably go along the joint line. You okay there? You yeah. don't have any problem there. No, I'm good. Okay, but if there was a problem there, I would go to the joint line and I'd get you to straighten the knee. Mm -hmm. And then I'd get you to flex the foot. Right. And then I'd get you to rotate first internally, the whole leg. Doing okay there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit tender. And take it back. So let's do that one more time here. Just straighten that out, flex the foot, and take it over. Good. Doing okay? Yeah. Now, it's really interesting because when you actually, if you go through orthopedic tests, some orthopedic tests are not very accurate. Joint line tenderness has about a 90% accuracy as compared to MRI. It may not be a tear, but it could be meniscus entrapment or compression in between. Okay, let's have you lie on your back now. Now we've focused on the front, the quadriceps, we've gone on the hamstrings, the adductors. Let's start working below the knee here a little bit. First we're going to go on the tibialis anterior. And I'll get on there and bring this down. You doing okay there? Yeah, that's good. Okay. And I'll make sure that we actually get a little bit of torsion in there too as I'm going through. Didn't really feel it too much until I started doing that, did you? Not at all, yeah. <laughs> good. Yeah, good. And of course, in terms of imbalances, we want to make sure that we work on both sides of the body. But for this particular video, I'll just demonstrate on the one side. Good. Doing okay? Yeah. Let's move up onto the lateral side here a little bit. Get on the peroneals. Bring that up. Doing okay there? Ooh, yeah. Feeling that a bit. Okay. I'm going to go up again. And now I'm going to get some torsion in there. That's when it really kicks in. Okay, doing okay? Yeah. All right. Oh, that's interesting. A little bit of... There we go. I freed up now. <laughs> Good. And then kind of taking it down a little bit. So I get on Proneus Longus, Brevis. Kind of work my way down the side here. Any restrictions that I feel, I'd stay there for a bit until I feel a bit of a release. Getting the torsion here makes all the difference in the world. Some of the standard moves where you're just using your thumbs and moving up, they work well, but not nearly as effective as this. Good. Okay, now I'm gonna have you turn over face down, please. Bring it up there. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to the gastrocnemius and soleus. Mickey's favorite. <laughs> <laughs> okay, doing okay there? Yeah. All right, and obviously we're on the other leg now, but just for the sake of the camera, you doing okay? Okay, what is the difference when I start putting torsion in there? Oh, it's, uh, it's a lot more intense. Yeah, you can really feel a lot deeper, can't you? Yes. Okay, so after we do well, three to five passes on here, kind of work our way around. We're actually going to get Mickey to go up onto her knees, please. So we can get on the deeper structures underneath there, Tom, Dick, and Harry. Yeah, straight up. Good. Okay, so as you see, as soon as she goes in this position, the calf muscle just eases right off, loosens right up. Then I can get into some of the deeper structures. Okay, lateral side here. 
flexor helicus longus. You okay there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, can oh. I can tell by your articulation here. There we go. Okay. So again, you're going to work medial right in the center. You're going to get lateral side, work our way around. You're tight there. Yeah. I don't know why. You've never had tight calves before. Oh, never. Never. <laughs> Good. Okay. So I'm going to get you to actually lie on your back again. So one other issue I want to address is actually the knee capsule. Now there's several ways we can address this. We can actually just work our way around the capsule, you know, get in and kind of feel that opening up a little bit. You're fine there. Oh yeah. Yeah. But what I can also do is actually take my forearm underneath the knee, take it in, and then get in and kind of traction that a bit. Good. So internal. Good. External. Feel how that changes yeah. the, the whole vector? Yeah. So we can actually open that up quite a bit. Good. Now, if I have patients come in and they're fairly osteoarthritic, I mean, Mickey's got great range of motion here, no problem at all. But I'd have them actually just bring the knee in, take it in internal rotation, and then bring it right in, whatever I could at the time. But this is a good way of actually taking stress off the knee capsule. Feeling okay? Oh yeah. Good. So these are some common procedures that we use in clinic every day. Very, very effective for releasing restrictions around the knee. As I said, we run through a whole orthopedic examination first. We actually have this on videos if you'd like to refer to it. And then we'd implement these procedures.